that his perfect will and plan for our life will be accomplished for his glory in this land. And the Bible says that the Midianites and the Amalekites, assassins, and all the children of the east were all laying along the valley floor of the desert floor like grasshoppers. And that there were so many of them that they were literally covered all the desert valley floor. And that their camels were without number as the grains of sand on the seaside for multitude. And to let you know how much more faith your enemy has in God's prophetic future and destiny in your plan, the enemy believes in you more than you do. Right. <laughs> the enemy's got more faith in what God wants to do with you than you do. Right. If God knows your destiny, you sure know the devil knows it. Right. And he's trying to do everything he can to keep you from getting there. Right. He knows where you're going with right. the anointing. Right. Right. If you
God. One second when she said, Daddy, just live for God. One second all time. Because God said, He who endures to the end, the same shall be saved. That's who's going to make it out of here. Put the teeth your head on. We've got to stand as close to God as I'm hugging this pole. Because He said, As surely as I brought Israel out and Moses out of Egypt, you better have your best pack. Come on. I want to be a five wise virgin. I don't want to be no fool.
We're his lambs and loot and we must reach our families and lost at any cost. Because every soul counts, because the ravening wolves, which are the demons of the night, are trying to come after our families, and any time you hear about wolves in scripture, that is a symbol of demons or imps from hell. So we better get serious and desperate in our prayer life and in our fasting and in reaching for our families' souls because this world is after the, our families and we better also bleed the blood of Jesus over our children as well because hell is after our offspring. Hell! You hear me? Hell is after the next generation. Hell is not afraid of what they were or what they are, but hell
Are they like are they better for seeing you come or better for seeing you go? God told me, my son, if my people will get a rebaptism of my agape love, then the sinners and the people I put in their pathways will feel my supernatural power. And they will be filled with the Holy Ghost. And they will be filled with my supernatural fire from that I poured out on the day of Pentecost. My throne, which is in the new Jerusalem right now. And I will cause the great harvest that I have told you I will give you. At the last the countries and the nations and the backsliders, I, the Lord, will begin to let come through your doors. And it will literally blow your minds of, 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 of my people when they see their loved ones coming through the doors of my church, saying the Lord. Yes. There must be self-discipline in order to see the fullness of God's Spirit and His sanctification and His prophetic future and destiny for our lives. We need to take the first step into the supernatural realm. The realm where God and his archangels and God's warrior angels and reaping angels walk and operate in the second and the third heavens. And God will send Michael, the angel of the prince of war, to fight for us. And we need to step into the fivefold ministry and into the supernatural spiritual gifts of the spirit. And we must put on the whole armor of God. For we are in spiritual warfare, my friend. Where you, where you cannot see your opponent. If he wants to side with you, he can do it. If, you are, if you're carnal or worldly, or you ain't where you're supposed to be in God, you're open, you're open field, you're open uh, target, or, or, or deer season on you. You better be walking where you're supposed to be, because you can't go up to a demon-possessed person and cast them out. Ask the sons of Sceva. Yes. They ran out naked, beaten, and, and couldn't hardly stand because they, 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 the, the, the demons told them, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who in the name of God is free to for you? The demons need to know your name in hell.
and the sword of the spirit do what Jesus did he said I have to the death with it in the death before these and nights he came back but I drove him insane Ron I sent him to death and I quoted him to death he threw as a written in my face and I threw it right back and added a few words to go with it come on my Jesus is big enough and bad enough And 
Manoah, which name means rest. God will give you rest from your battles.
praise God. That's right. Hallelujah. Sanctified. Amen. Sanctified. That's yes. what we are. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We're so thankful. Thank you for that study, Brother Brian. Amen. Praise God. Samson Amen. is found in the book of Hebrews. Amen. I talked with Brother Barnes one time, and I said, well, what about some of those that are not listed? He said, if they're listed in the 11th chapter of Hebrews, he said, then they made it. The rest, we'll find out when we get there. But I'm so thankful this morning Amen. to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So thankful that God's presence is here. Amen. Amen. I love it when God shows up.
and then God moves in on the scene. Amen. And he makes a way. Measure God makes ways. Yes, He does. Out of the height. And our minds can't comprehend what He's doing. God always he has always a plan. Yes. God's plan was to get you in this church and get you filled He's up. on top of everything. That's God's plan. Yeah. And sometimes God changes our character. Sometimes God moves us in mysterious ways. But God made a way. Worship of the adult choir.
thank God for the blood. I pray to tell somebody, the Lord dealt with me this 
the last couple of weeks. And I said, Lord, are you sure? There's some things that's probably going to make some people mad. Come on, Pastor. Because it's, it's in your neighborhood. Okay. But in Psalms 37, verse 3, he says, Trust who? In the Lord. In the Lord. we got to trust Him. And do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land. And verily thou shalt Yeah. 
ahí. Yo no sé lo que tú vas. Amén. Y el Señor dijo, hear what the unjust judge said. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear wrong with them. Verse 8 says, I tell you that he will. Yes. I tell you he will. Look at your neighbor. He will. He will. Avenge. Yeah. Avenge. He's the avenger. Then speedily. Speedily he will do it. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on earth. What is faith? All right. In James 5 through 16, he says, But above all things, my brethren, swear not neither by heaven nor by the earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yea be yea. Be yea. And your nay, nay. Lest you fall into condemnation. Amen. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing songs. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. And in heaven, if we have committed sins, they shall be forgiven. One to another. Amen. And pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. One more scripture in Isaiah 45, verses 11, and then verse 19. He says, Then saith the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, and his maker. Ask me of things to come concerning my sons and concerning the work of my hands. Command ye me. All right. Pastor, are you trying to tell me we're supposed to command God? He said, Isaiah said, Command me. Command me. Amen. Command me. All right. Ask me that things to come concerning my sons. Verse 19 says, I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. I said unto the seed of Jacob, See ye me in vain. Come on. I, the Lord, speaks righteousness. Declare, I declare things that are right. This morning, we, we talk a lot and, and pray a lot about Lord's will being done. All right. As I begin to study this, in the book of Ezekiel 22 and 30, the Lord gives no scriptural precedent yes. of responsibility in prayer. God constantly looks for people to simply stand in the gap. Yes, sir. I want to be a man like that. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus did not pray, Thy will be done, because his flesh did not know the will of God. No, sir. But he prayed that because it did know and didn't want to do it. Just not wrap real tight if you want to be hung on a cross. Come have on, nails man. driven in your hands and in your feet. There's something wrong. Martin Luther, the great reformer, said, Lord, I will have my will of thee at this time. We all have desire. So does God. Yes, sir. Sure do. Have you ever thought about that? Come on, Pastor. I won't, I won't, I won't, I won't. I hear a lot of it. We go to the Lord in prayer, we got a grocery list. We got a shopping list. Sure do. God, I want you to do this, and I want
want you to do that. You see that hard-headed boy up ahead that won't listen. God, this is what I want you to do to him. God already knows your heart, your son's heart. Okay? He already knows your daughter's heart. But well, we need to learn to pray the scriptures. All right? Concerning our loved ones. Amen. I have a lot of scriptures. I'm not going to be able to use them all this morning. There are perhaps thousands of things that God wants to give us, the church. And thousands is a really an inadequate number. But we sometimes get in the way of God giving us what we ask for. Yes, sir. Amen. I love working by myself. Terrible habit. Yes. I knew you'd say that. But I like working by myself. Right. Amen. And God wants to like some work too. But He has to depend on us. Yes, sir. Because we are vessels that He flows through. We sometimes get in his way. That's very true. Have you ever called something, somebody something this? Oh, I already got one of those. <laughs> if somebody gives me something, you will never know that it wasn't the perfect thing that I wanted. Amen. Usually, the reason we don't have it, we have not asked him at all. We have asked him with an incorrect method or an incorrect motive. Yes, I want you to understand this morning. Our motive, why we want it, is very important to God. What I did this morning has been praying for some things for a while, but it just hasn't happened. Maybe the reason it happened, hasn't happened is because we ask him in the wrong method. Yes, sir. We have not been persistent enough with him. We are not yet ready to receive the answer that God's going to give us. We cannot see the harm of, the re of our request and what it would bring into our lives. Come on, Pastor. Years ago, there was an old story. I don't know if it was Walt Disney or what it was, but this lady, she went to church and she said, Lord, and there was a bus driver in their church and he drove the bus and she was praying and she said, Lord, put that man under my truth. He's such a good man. Put him under my tree. And he wound up marrying somebody else. And she got upset with God. Until about two years later, he killed his wife. The pastor of the church walked in and called her friend, please do more words for not putting that man under my tree. <laughs> but for two years, she was mad and upset with God. Because God, I asked you to put that man under my tree. Let him be my gift. Let him be my husband. Wow. She only saw the outward appearance. That's right. And God said, no, he would hurt you. So I cannot answer that request. In Jeremiah 29 and 11, the Lord said, I know the thoughts yeah. that I think towards you. Yes, Say the Lord, thoughts of peace Thank you, God. and not of evil to yeah. give you an expected end. Thank God. Sometimes we're praying for something that is not in God's plan for our lives. We will argue with God. 
Corinthians chapter 4, verses 2 and 3, he says, You lust and have not. You kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet ye have not, because you ask not. The, in the book of James, and I didn't give you that one, you don't even have to turn there, but in the book of James, he said, A double-minded man is what? Is unstable in all of his ways. Sometimes on what did we ask God about something? And on Tuesday, we asked for something totally different. You know why? Because we have not prayed and sought the divine will of God. In verse 3 of James 4, he says, You ask and receive not because you ask what? Amiss. Right? That you may consume it upon your own lust. Someone stopped in the parking lot out here the other day. Sister Patsy stopped by and was talking to me and, and this car pulls up and I didn't recognize the car and I went and I, I saw who it was and uh, I went to speak to this lady and, and she was thanking me for taking that piano. I said, well, that little girl just loved it. I didn't need it, but it was a blessing to somebody else. She said, can I pray for you before I leave? I said, yes, ma'am, I'm always up to a prayer. She said, I want to pray a blessing on you. I said, just lay it on me and lay it thick. Amen. This lady's elderly and she said, well, I don't want to. She said, because I'm up in age, I don't want to get out. I'm going to stay in my car. And, and because I don't want to get COVID, uh, she put a glove, handed me a glove, and I put the glove on, and she put her hand on top of my glove hand, and she began to pray. And I, while she was praying, I said, Lord, please don't let her get told it. If she does, I was the last person she prayed with. I might get blamed for it. That was not even in God's plans for that lady. Come on. She woke up wanting to pray for me. In 1 Corinthians 2 and 9, it says, But it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither entered in the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. I love you, Lord. God has got some things planned and prepared for every one of you sitting on these pews. No way. 
everybody said, well, what did you say? He said, well, I'm just saying you might as well get some life insurance in case he gets in a wreck. And he reached across that cabinet. He tore that paper up. He said, get your corpus in the truck and let's go. I asked him many times years after, why did you do that? He said, because I realized you wasn't ready for a motorcycle. You had too much evil to the evil in you. He said, when that man said to your life life insurance, he said, a light turned on in my head. He said, I think God showed me. And I said, no, it ain't no way God showed you that. I said, I've been praying and fasting for that motorcycle. There's no way. But God will use an old man or salesman and a motorcycle to wake my daddy up. But did you get anything? Yeah, we went straight to the cattle auction bar and he bought me a quarter horse. Oh, me a brand new saddle. And I couldn't jump logs too big with that horse. But this morning, we're going to talk to you about how to argue with God concerning Come on, His promises. When you argue with God concerning His promises, Jacob was afraid when returning to Jacob to meet Esau, his brother. He reminded God of his promise in Genesis 32 and 12. And thou saidest, I will surely do thee good and make thy seed as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered by the multitude. And God, I go back home and my brother Esau is mad. And he's already sent messengers out to talk to me. And he says, Esau's going to kill you. He prayed, Lord, remember what you said. Have you ever prayed that way? Yes, sir. Lord, you said he's going to say my name. Lord, you said he was going to fill my mom with the Holy Ghost. He's going to fill my head with the Holy Ghost. And he did. Sister Vicki. He filled Brother J.D. with the Holy Ghost. He took away the urge for cigarettes away from him. This is one of the best ways to get your prayers answered. All right. Get a scripture in the Bible where God makes a promise. Yes, sir. And then take it to God and say, God, look at this. You promised me. Yeah. yeah. You promised me. But the last six months, I've been praying for our son Adam in the South Church. And, and I, every time I pray for him, I said, Lord, you promised. You promised. And you filled it. He got the Holy Ghost right over here in the of this piano bench. And God filled him with the Holy Ghost. He spoke in tongues. We baptized him in Jesus' name. And he lived for God for about a year and a half. And then he walked away from God. It's the it's like someone making notes of a conversation that they had with you. If you're a man of your word, you will fulfill the promises that you made God. This reminding God is what prayer is all about. It really is. Stay with me. The word praying means to ask. But we want to put God like hell on the shelf. I still don't know what all that's about. I see all these pictures. Sister Latoya said, she said a picture and she had all that hell sitting around eating cookies. <laughs> I'm not real sure what all that's about. I'm going to sit down one day and get all that explained to me. I know Sister Amber and them does a lot of that. And I know it's for the children. I understand that. But we want to put God on a shelf. God, when I get through with my 364 ways to get this taken care of, if it ain't happening, I'll come talk to you. But when we pray, you and I must remind God. Yes, sir. Not that He forgets. Right. Amen. No. Every one of you parents that got your kids and your grandkids, something they 
people may know Hallelujah. that thou art the Lord God yes. and that thou hast turned their heart back right. again. Hear, O oh Lord, that this people may know. When you go to the Lord in prayer and you're believing God for something. Hebrews 11 6 says, Without faith, it's impossible to please God. If you go to the Lord in prayer, doubt while you're praying, you're going to get nothing. You're going to get nothing. So if you want to argue with God, say, Lord, your reputation's on the line. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Right. I can't heal nobody, God, but you can. Amen. And if I'm going to pray for these people, you need to show up, God. Ooh, because your word said, I am the Lord thy God that he loved me. God, I can't heal nobody. Only God can. Right. So if you're going to argue with God, Ooh. argue with him concerning
Hezekiah spread the threatening letter. He sent a rib before the Lord and God if he, these heathens win the battle. They will think that you're not the true God. Amen. That's it. Elijah prayed on Mount Carmel. God, these heathen have cut themselves and they've danced and bled all over the altar and all over the sacrifice. Now I ask you, God, to show up and show up. I ask you, God, to let these people know that you're the God of Israel and that I'm your prophet. I want you to know when you begin to pray like that, when you begin to call on the name of the Lord and say, Lord, if you don't answer this prayer, you let me down. God, if you said you would never lie to me. I mean, you need to get serious. When you argue with God, I am. If you want to win, Amen. you say, Hebrews 19 and 19, thou art Save thou us out of his hand. That all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the Lord God, even thou only. You have to remind God of his reputation. When you argue with God, remind him of his attributes. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
the judge of all the earth do right, God? Right. Yeah. yeah. Abraham said, God, you're going to destroy everybody. So not the judge I really believe, Sister Audrey, if Abraham would have prayed and said, Lord, if there's just one righteous, yeah. would you spare it? Brother Donald, son of a Gomorrah, would have still been there today. Not a 
stone or whatever it was came through. Water went in his house. He stuck over here 24 hours away and couldn't get to them. But God took care of them. Sister Ross said, 
I wish I would listen to. She said, I just lost somebody. And I'm going to sell before I lose any more. She said, you got out with everything. I'm getting out with half. We need to remind God. Oh, I will. When you pray. And really, we call it praying. Most times, we're arguing with God. Let's be honest. Yeah, it's a good argument. Especially if things are not going our way. But if you want to have a debate with God, remind Him of His reputation. Yeah. Remind Him of what His Word well, says. Remind Him that you're a child of God. And Lord, you said you would never allow the righteous to be forsaken or your seed begging bread. Yeah. He said that if we will pray that way, we will win with Him. Told me. Amen. Let's stand. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I hope this helps somebody. If you've been praying, the first thing you need to do is search yourself. Have I failed God? Do I have something on me that's unrepented of? We have to be right with God. That's why he said, if a man's ways please God, yes, sir. he'll make even the end be at peace with you. It's a sad thing. But we all have enemies. We have people that are trying to destroy us because they are being used by the devil. That's the truth, Pastor. They are. They're being used by the devil. That's no lie. But God said, if you'll love me and keep my commandments, Amen. I'll give you what? The desires of your heart. Amen. So if you want to win with God, pray His word. Pray His word. When you deal down to pray before you ever start praying, go through the Bible a few minutes. Look up some promises of God. I got a little book. It looks like a New Testament. And it's got promises of God in it. I take that book every time I pray, Brother T. I lay that book out in front of me and I just begin to pray those promises of God. And I said, you said every one of them is for me. Amen. And God has blessed us. Sister Veronica, every one of those promises are for you. Amen. There's 365 of them if you'll just go count them. Thank you. you think that's strange? No, there's a promise for every day of the year. Amen. God's got the promises for you. Pray them Amen. and you'll win. Amen. Lord, we love you this morning. We thank you for the goodness of God. We thank you for keeping your hands upon your people. For you said that my people who are called by my name will humble themselves in humility and pray. Yes. And seek my face. Yes. Lord. Seek his word. Seek his face. Yes. And turn from their wicked ways. Amen. I'll forgive their sins and I'll heal their land. That is a promise from God. Pray and say, Lord, your reputation is on life. That's what you told me to tell them, Lord. Pray the word because your reputation is on the line. You will give us. You will give us the desires of our heart. Bless everyone. Keep your hands up on them. Take them all safely. We ask all of these things in the lovely name of Jesus. And everybody said, I win. I win.